。好啦，咁啊，我哋讲咗报成，我哋讲咗竞争。好，而家咧，我哋就讲埋呢一个互利共生同埋偏利共生。最尾我哋仲会讲埋一个咧叫寄生嘅。好啦，咁我哋先講呢一個嘅互利共生先。互利共生呢，就即係咧兩個物種，當佢哋住埋嗰陣時，兩個物種都會咧係得益。如果嗰兩個物種係分開自己住咧，佢哋兩個咧係冇咁成功嘅。但係如果佢哋係住埋一齊咧，兩個係俾單獨居住咧，係會成功好多嘅。咁我哋呢個咧就叫做互利共生。咁我哋咧就會拎三個例子去舉例嘅。好，第一個海葵住喺蟹殼上面喎。海葵係一個物種嚟嘅，蟹係另外一個物種。呢兩個物種如果分開居住咧，佢哋兩個咧得到嘅益處咧係細過兩個好似而家咁樣住埋一齊。佢哋咩叫住埋一齊咧？就係、是、蟹仔，佢會一路喺個海嗰度揾海葵。如果喺見到海葵咧，佢就會掘嗰棵海葵咧，將佢放上去自己嘅蟹殼上面嘅喎。一放咗上去咧，只蟹又好開心嘅，即刻海葵亦都會即刻好開心嘅。咁佢呢個咧互利共生一齊住嘅方法咧，兩個嘅生存機會咧都會大大提升嘅。好啦，海葵係乜嘢嚟嘅咧？可能你都會比較陌生嘅。海葵咧，佢呢度有好多好多嘅竹蘇，上面咧係有啲有毒嘅刺嘅。嗰啲刺咧係可以刉啲魚啊，刉嗰啲八爪魚，刉其他嗰啲動物嘅。咁啊，蟹咧就普通一隻，我哋都食過噶啦呢啲。係啦，咁點解佢哋兩個住埋一齊會成功啲咧？好啦，咁我想問啦，海葵從蟹。得到嘅好處係乜嘢咧？佢住喺佢背脊，同就咁住喺嚿石嘅表面，有咩分別咧？好啦，蟹仔識唔識周圍走㗎？蟹仔識周圍走嘅喎、哦。咁如果海葵佢住喺嚿岩石嘅表面，佢有冇得周圍走啊？冇嘅喎。咁如果嗰個地方冇乜食物，佢又唔識周圍走嘅，佢咪有機會餓死咯。但係如果係住喺只蟹嘅背脊嗰度，蟹會自己去揾嘢食噶嘛？只蟹自己喺度食食食食食食食食食食食，食完啲嘢啲嘢食咧就會飄上去噶咯喎，周圍飄。咁只海葵咧，咪可以間接咧食蟹仔食剩嘅嘢咯。好啦，咁你話啦，啊冇理由咁著數，淨係俾你有嘢食噶喎。咁只蟹有咩好處咧？啊，原來咧海葵上面嘅刺就好似佢件盔甲咁啦。如果有條魚或者有其他動物八爪魚想去食呢只蟹咧，真係好難啊！嗰啲海葵嗰啲刺咧就會刉嗰只八爪魚啦。好啦，所以我哋總結第一句咯喎，海葵可以喺蟹度得到咩好處啊？佢可以藉住蟹嘅活動咧，去其他嘅地方。第二，佢可以食蟹仔食剩嘅食物，蟹又係可以喺海葵嗰度攞到咩好處啊？佢可以受到海葵分泌毒素嘅觸手保護，嗯，相當之唔錯。好啦，咁小丑魚又同呢個海葵，大家你覺得會唔會起住一個互利共生嘅關係啊？咁我先講下佢哋會做咩先。小丑魚咧喺進化嗰陣時咧，佢嘅皮咧。係對海葵嘅刺咧起咗抗性嘅，任吉唔嬲嘅，冇事嘅喎。咁所以咧，小丑魚咧，佢而家揩住啲海葵嗰度，係唔會俾佢刺傷嘅。咁好似好丑魚住喺海葵嗰度，其實想有啲乜嘢啊？就係、是、得到海葵嘅保護啦。外面如果呢度有隻大鯊魚嘅 ，O K， 哇，好驚啊！咁只海呢只小丑魚咧，佢就會匿喺呢個位。咁呢條大鯊魚就喺度諗啦，唉、哎，呢、這個世界咁多魚食，無謂食一隻咁難食噶啦，唉、哎，我都係走啦。咁就小丑魚咪唔會俾人食啦。好啦，咁海葵又喺小丑魚嗰度得到乜嘢好處咧？小丑魚咧，佢就會出去食嘢噶咯喎，食嘢，食完啲嘢咧，佢就會呼咁樣翻嚟帶嚟呢度，咁咧就海葵就會食到小丑魚帶俾佢嘅食物啦。
。所以呢一個你覺得算唔算護理共生嘅特點啊？係算嘅。好啦，咁我哋之前講咗隻蟹，又講咗海葵啊，咁不如咧我哋睇下真實嘅情況啦。嗱，呢只就寄居蟹嚟嘅。寄居蟹都好中意海葵嘅喎，佢攞咗幾多棵啊？嗱，呢個好貪心，佢攞咗一棵、兩棵、三棵，哇！攞三棵，咁呢只蟹仔就攞一棵啫。好啦，我哋望一望佢哋點樣將啲海葵擺上去自己背脊先。The best kind of symbiosis is called mutualism. This is where both parties get something out of the deal. For example, take this hermit crab. She has a garden of small anemones on her shell that she carries everywhere she goes. The anemones give her protection from predators like octopus because their stinging tentacles pack a punch. But the anemones have a great life living on her shell because they gather some of the scraps from her messy eating and they travel around with her to the next meal. Since the hermit crab uses an old snail shell for a home, she needs to find a larger shell every once in a while as she grows. When she finds one, it's as simple as hopping out of the old shell and into the new one. But what to do about the anemones? The anemones are so important to the hermit crab that she must also move them to the new shell. Without them, she's defenseless. Slowly, with a combination of tapping on the anemones and peeling their edges, the hermit crab convinces them to release their grip. Only the crab knows how to coax the anemones into letting go. They will not submit to any other creature pulling on them. Once the anemone lets go of the old shell, the hermit crab deposits it on her new shell. She simply plops it in place and holds it until the anemone grabs on. The anemone will then crawl around on the shell and find a good spot all on its own, while the hermit crab turns her attention to working on the next anemone. Fifteen minutes later, with the anemones planted on her new shell, the hermit crab has completed her move. She leaves her old shell for the next hermit crab, a bit smaller than herself. The best kind of symbiosis. 好啦，咁啦，加咗呢一个嘅超级武器海葵喺背脊，究竟有冇效能够抵御暴食者嘅攻击咧？这个 hermit crab lives inside empty shells of mollusks. It's prime real estate because it's relatively light and provides protection from intruders. That's because there are plenty of things in the sea keeping an eye on a crab. Unfortunately, the octopus is an expert at breaking and entering. The shell wasn't enough protection for this crab. That's why some hermit crabs go hunting for a housemate, a housemate that can act as a security guard. The sea anemone's tentacles are covered with deadly stinging cells for attack and defense, but convincing a bodyguard to shift into a new house isn't easy. The crab has to carefully tickle the anemone's bottom to make it relax. Only then can it be coaxed into moving onto the crab's shell. There are advantages for the anemone if it moves onto the crab's mobile home. Often, it has a room to itself. And it gets to feed on the crab's leftovers. 
But researchers have found that the more anemone bodyguards a crab has on its shell, the greater its chances of surviving an attack. So will three anemones be enough to deter an octopus? This odd couple is definitely not flavor of the month for an octopus. But neither animal has to work hard to maintain the relationship. Well, 早,它一般的特點呢,它要住在水裡面的。大家得到的好處是比分開是更加多的 我不嬲是要住在海裡面的,你看看我現在居然可以在陸地那裡生存 Gayokimatkolo, 在這個地方剛躁到連草都生不到 Kusin 它就可以提供食物了 
，因為真菌先至係華氏嗰個，甚至係決定拍檔嘅生長模式，例如又平又扁咁。不過如果你想睇曬呢對拍檔咧，就一定要用呢一種電子掃描片嚟鏡先睇得到嘅。呢個係片狀嘅切片，這裡呢度咧係最頂，完全由真菌形成嘅。呢啲絲係真菌嘅一部分，而呢個球體咧就係植物嘅本身嚟。想睇下佢哋點樣親密法咧，你就要用更犀利嘅顯微鏡先得喎。呢幅相咧就放大咗一萬倍啦。呢度係真菌絲，呢度。係植物本身，即係佢哋攞營養嘅海藻啦。呢兩種生物一齊組成咗三個得最廣泛嘅係青苔。The partners operate so closely together that each pair is given a name. 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 有啲青苔仲會長成好細有枝冠木添。佢哋仲係好成功嘅生物添。佢哋以自己嘅方式喺惡劣嘅環境之下生存，冇草可以喺南美沙漠邊緣呢啲咁乾旱嘅斜坡度生長嘅，所以泥塊咁靚嘅橙色地氈係完全由青苔所組成嘅噃。嗯，哇！頭先我哋睇到咧，原來係一個冇草嘅沙漠。唔係喺沙漠咁乾燥嘅地方，草都生長唔到，但係互利共生之下咧，嗯，地衣就可以生存啦。咁我哋而家指住呢個位，你覺得係咩啊？藻定真菌啊？冇錯啦，就係、是、藻啦。呢、這個地方咧係藻定真菌啊？冇錯啦，就係、是、真菌啦。咁佢個身體呈咩狀啊？我加落個字菌絲狀。好啦，咁啊，第二個例子，互利共生咧，就係固氮細菌同埋豆科植物啦。咁可能呢兩個你哋都係好陌生啊，唔知咩叫固氮細菌，又唔知咩叫豆科植物。豆科植物咧，就係我而家幅相後邊呢一棵啦。望唔望到啲豆荚啊？呢一棵就係豆科植物啦。OK， <咳>好啦，咁啊，豆科植物咧。固氮細菌咩叫固氮細菌咧？固氮細菌咧，其實喺我哋嘅泥土咧，係都有嘅，但係個數量咧又唔係太多，又唔係太少啦。好啦，呢啲固氮細菌同豆科嘅植物，佢哋係好中意住埋一齊嘅。咩咩叫住埋一齊咧？嗱，我哋睇一睇呢一個咧就係豆科植物嘅葉啦。嗱，呢個咧就係豆科植物嘅根部，呢、這個就係豆科植物嘅根部。咦，你望到佢同普通植物嘅根咧，就個樣就好似都幾唔同啊！你望到佢個根部咧，好多一粒粒呢啲瘤啊！啊，呢啲瘤，呢啲瘤唔係 cancer 嚟嘅喎，呢啲瘤咧，佢係一啲我哋叫根瘤嘅構造，佢係俾一啲嘅固氮細菌咧入去住嘅。啊，正常嚟講嘅植物，如果唔係豆科咧，佢哋係冇呢啲瘤嘅，但係豆科植物就有呢啲瘤俾呢啲固氮細菌居住啦。咁啊，固氮細菌又係咩嚟嘅咧？固氮細菌就係呢啲嘢啦。佢係能夠有個特殊嘅技能咧，就係、是、將大嘅氮氣將佢變成硝酸鹽無機嘅肥料嘅。但係正常嚟講咧，如果我哋冇固氮細菌咧，要將大氣嘅氮氣咧轉成硝酸鹽咧，就只得一個情況啦，就係閒雷閃電嗰陣時有二十二萬伏嘅電壓咧，先至做到嘅。但係豆科植物咧，佢就好容易咧，就已經將大氣嘅氮氣咧轉成硝酸鹽啦。我寫少少喺度啦
大氣嘅氮轉成硝酸鹽。如果有咗豆固氮細菌咧，就係呢一個啦。佢就好容易能夠做到啦 ，very easy。但如果大氣嘅氮氣咧，如果要直接變成硝酸鹽咧，喺自然界嘅環境啦，要行雷閃電咧，就要咁多伏嘅電壓先至做到啦。咁所以你覺得？硝酸鹽對植物就好緊要噶嘛，佢有咗啲氮就做蛋白質來嚟生長噶嘛，咁所以植物其實係要大量嘅硝酸鹽嘅，咁所以固氮細菌咧，如果植物能夠擁有到佢咧，植物嘅生長就好安全啦，自己幫自己添肥料。好啦，咁我哋又望翻呢度啦喎，咁呢度咧呢棵植物咧係豆科植物嚟嘅呢一棵。豆科嘅，咁呢個咧就唔係豆科植物啦。佢哋咧有一個對話喎、哦，啊，咁都幾有趣嘅，我哋一齊睇下。啊，點解你咁唔開心嘅？啊，梗係啦，我而家好肚餓，冇嘢食，我生長好差。誒、欸，點解你又咁開心咧？梗係啦，我係豆科植物啊嘛，我咧個根部嗰度有一啲根瘤 ，OK， 我啲根瘤咧就住咗一啲豆固氮嘅細菌就會走咗入去住，一粒粒咧佢就會走咗入去住，入咗去住佢哋咧就唔走噶啦。呢啲嘅根瘤裡面嘅固氮細菌咧，佢有一個好特殊嘅能力就係、是、固氮啊，佢係能夠將大氣嘅氮氣啦。將佢吸咗入去個根瘤裏面咧，跟住就變成硝酸鹽，變咗硝酸鹽之後，我就可以攞到呢一個養分啦。我就攞咗啲硝酸鹽之後咧，我就會做自己嘅蛋白質，所以我嘅生長同修補都好正常咯。咁點解你唔生啲根瘤嘅？梗係咧，我唔係豆科植物啊。好啦，唔係豆科植物，佢哋又點攞硝酸鹽咧？佢就靠泥土嘅呢啲固氮細菌啦。不過個數量好少咯，做出嚟嘅硝酸鹽咧都好少，所以咧佢嘅生長亦都係比較慢嘅。所以香港政府咧好多時佢哋都會種固氮，所謂種豆科植物嘅，例如台灣相思樹啦、紅黃木啊。<咳>好啦，咁我哋而家睇一睇。呢、这個第一個物種 A， 呢個第二個物種 B， 當佢哋住埋一齊，固氮細菌攞到啲咩好處咧？固氮細菌佢攞到豆科植物，佢上面咧就會做光合作用，佢會做碳水化合物俾個豆科植物用嘅。咁豆科植物仲會得埋保護添，咁所以咧呢度仲講埋呢個，呢度咧就會做光合作用噶。光合作用做出嚟嘅食物咧，就會一路運落去根部，俾固氮細菌開餐啊！咁所以咧，大家就互利共生啦。豆科植物攞到啲咩好處啊？固氮細菌住喺豆科植物嘅根瘤裏面咧，佢就將空氣裏面嘅氮變成硝酸鹽，跟住咧佢就可以咧。提供蛋白質咧，俾科植物用啦。咁人類又點樣用豆科植物去能夠將我哋嘅無個間種嗰個啊收成能夠提升咧？原來啲農夫咧就好聰明噶，佢哋可能冇錢買肥料啦。佢哋咧首先咧就種啲豆科植物啦。種完豆科植物之後咧。咁呢棵豆科植物咧，嘅根瘤呢個部分裡面嘅固氮細菌就會做固氮，固氮完之後咧，呢棵植物咧就可以生得好好啦。嘅，但係其實個農夫係咪想食呢棵豆科植物啊？唔係啊，佢而家咧係想種呢一個粟米啊。但係種粟米之前，佢哋就會先種豆科植物嘅。
中原豆科植物咧，而家咧佢就會斬咗啲樹葉啦，斬咗啲根啦，跟住咧佢就會埋喺泥土嗰度嘅。埋喺泥土呢度多唔多有機物啊？好多喎、哦！咁呢度咧呢啲植物嘅葉啦。同埋啲根啦，死咗噶啦，佢就會俾泥土嘅分解者咧，去分解，成為咧一啲無機物嘅營養。咁而家泥土咧，就超多營養咯、哦。OK， 哇！種完豆科植物之後，將佢啲葉根埋咗入去泥土，分解完之後，哇！嘅營養就好多咯、哦<咳>。好啦，跟住再下一輪咧，佢先種呢一個嘅粟米。咁粟米嘅營養咪多咗咯。好啦，再下一個咧，我哋就講埋一個叫做片利共生。片利共生咧，我哋咧嘅符號咧就唔係兩個加號嘅，我哋就係一個加號，一個係零嘅。零嘅意思咧就係你同我一齊住，我又冇傷害，不過我又冇益處喎。另外一方咧就會得到益處嘅。咁我哋舉一個例子為例啦。就係藤壺喺蟹殼上面嘅生活，呢啲咧就係藤壺嚟嘅，即係嗰啲火山口啊。你行山咧，去到啲岩岸嘅啲藤壺就係呢啲啦，界腳嘅。咁呢啲藤壺咧同蟹住埋一齊啊，邊個係得到益處咧？就係、是、個藤壺啦。冇得到益處，冇得到害處，嗰、那個就係蟹仔。藤壺得到咩好處啊？就好似之前狐狸共生咁樣咯。佢嗰個海葵住喺嗰個蟹仔背脊嗰度，只蟹仔喐噶嘛，識係咪？咁所以咧，而家呢啲藤壺咧，佢就可以咧，藉住蟹仔嘅喐動啦，去到另外一個地方啊。咁去到另外一個地方有咩好處啊？對藤壺行街啊？唔係嘅，藤壺一般係住喺岩石表面噶嘛。咁如果嗰個岩石表面長期冇水或者太熱，其實佢會死嘅。但如果係住喺蟹仔嘅背脊就唔同啦，只蟹仔覺得冇水，覺得好熱，佢就會順手帶埋只藤壺啦，一齊走啊嘛。咁只藤壺咪可以咧，唔會渴死，又唔會熱死咯。仲有蟹仔食剩嘅嘢會俾埋佢添。不過蟹又唔會因為得到咩益處或者受損嘅，所以我哋呢個就叫做片利共生啦。